This is my new deals page on DaveSwift.com. It's got hundreds of Black Friday deals and I'm gonna be keeping it up year round with all of the best tech deals. I love it because I feel like it gives me a little bit of my sanity back. Now, instead of just getting penetrated by whatever ads hit me on Facebook or whatever emails hit my inbox, I can find products I am actually interested in. Like, let's say I wanna find WooCommerce products that are available as LTDs. Click a couple buttons, wait a second, and then the table automatically refreshes with only those products. Something that's a feature to me, but maybe a bug to you, is that this entire table is powered by a Google Sheet. That is not a requirement, it's just how I'm choosing to do it because Google Sheets is fast. Like, it's super easy to zip around and copy and paste between different columns. I just really like updating tabular information in a spreadsheet type of format. However, if I showed this spreadsheet to my site visitors, they would run away screaming. The WordPress plugin that's empowering all of this is Ninja Tables. I am using a few other tools, which I will tell you about in this video, but let's just get into it. I wanna show you how I built this thing. I'm really excited about it, and hopefully it inspires you to build a table for your site as well. So here's the back end of my website. You can see I have Ninja Tables Pro installed. You will need the Pro version to follow along with what I'm doing. Of course, there is a free version that's much more limited, but I'm really pushing Ninja Tables to the brink of its limits here. Let's go ahead and edit this table and I'll show you how everything works. So first of all, I'm connecting up to Google Sheets, which I can edit right here. These are all the columns in my Google Sheets. If there's some columns I don't wanna pull into Ninja Tables, I just uncheck them right here and I'll explain why this one is unchecked in a moment. And then this is the actual URL of the Google Sheet. So that's where the data is being pulled in from. So all of the columns that I'm bringing in from Google Sheets are right here. And you can see there's a lot of them, a lot more than I'm actually appearing to use on the front end. If we check this out, we've got one, two, three, four, five columns, but yet I've got so many over here. And that's because we can actually combine columns into a single column. For example, this first column here labeled tool, which is actually a combination of at least four different columns. I've got the discount amount, which is 40% in this case, the name of the tool, which is right here. I've got a screenshot of the homepage, which is a live screenshot that get, gets updated frequently. And then I also have a link to the actual product. So that is four different columns all combined into one. So here is the tool column inside of Ninja Tables and let's click on the gear icon and I'll show you what I did. Under basic settings, I didn't really change anything. In fact, we can go right to the end here, which is transform value. I love this because it's kind of like email marketing where you get those little tokens to say like first name. So you can be like, hello, John, uh, hello, Susie. And you drop the little token in. Well, here I've got a token or they call it a short code for every other column in the spreadsheet. So what I've done is drop those tokens in with a little bit of HTML up here at the top to make that layout that you've seen. So if we just parse this really quick, the whole thing is enclosed in a link. And then we've got a string of text where we say the discount amount off the name of the product. So that's where we'll get like 40% off WooCommerce. And then we're showing an image which is using the screenshot section. So row link is gonna be right over here on the spreadsheet, link. Row discount is going to be here on the spreadsheet, discount. Row tool is going to be the name of the product itself. And then finally, row screenshot is right here, which is actually just a JPEG, a screenshot that is automatically populated of the image. Well, it's semi-automatically populated. Let me show you how that part works because I think it's kind of cool. When new deals get added, I'll use this link right here because it doesn't have a screenshot. I'm gonna copy this link, and then I'm gonna go over to an app called Hexomatic, and they're currently running a Black Friday sale, as you can see from the banner in the app here. And I've got this little workflow set up in Hexomatic where I can simply just paste in some links. So this is my input section, which I could upload a text file of links if I wanted to. And then it's run through this screen capture section where I'm capturing a small laptop screen, waiting 10 seconds to make sure these whole page loads. And then it's going to resize and compress the image uh, eight by 80% to 250 pixels wide. Let's go ahead and run this and I'll show you what it looks like. So you can see here it's running now. I'm gonna click in so we can see the actual results as they are processed. So it's still running the first link here and I'll reload. And there we go. Now it has taken the screenshot and here it's resized the image. Now, if I was doing a lot of these, I would export them to a CSV file and just paste them right into the Google Sheet. But because there's only one, I can simply copy it, go back over to my Google Sheet, paste it in. Now, this will automatically update on the website within a few minutes. 
Google Sheets gets updated every five minutes. I do have some page caching, so it just kind of makes things get a little bit more extended. I like that, it gives me a little bit of a safety net, but if I do a big update of a lot of different deals, I'll just clear that cache and then everything goes live right away. This is the entry for the link we just generated the screenshot for, for Right Sonic. And you can see here that there's no image appearing and that's because it's behind that cache. If I clear the cache, I would expect this to update pretty much automatically. Here's my Cloudflare account. I can do my recently purged here, which is the deals page. I'll click purge, jump back over to my deal page. Let's refresh this. We'll search for right Sonic and there we go. Now it's got the screenshot. Let's talk about this filter right here. It's called only Dave's favorites. And when you check this, the table updates and you're only going to see my favorite products. And I like this because it gives the table a little bit of personality and tables generally just aren't personable. So how does this all work on the back end? So over in the spreadsheet, the very last column is called favorite. And anytime it's a product that's one of my favorites, I go ahead and just write Dave's favorite in. It's long enough that I'm not gonna accidentally type it. And you know, there's not that many of them. They come in, in groups because often I like certain developers more than others. But uh, yeah, that's how that works on the back end. So how do we get it to display on the front end? First of all, we're not seeing this column at all on the front end, right? It's just the checkbox. We're only filtering by it, but there's no visual indicator that it's actually a favorite. I suppose I could add a little heart or something to the columns of my favorite items, but right now I'm not doing that. So what I've done is under favorite, that's the same label you saw in the Google sheet. I'm clicking on the gear icon here and you can see that under responsive breakpoints, I've got it totally hidden on all devices. Now we've not talked about using this on a mobile device and that might be an objection you have in your mind, yeah, but tables don't work on mobile. Well, I've got news for you. I've got this working beautifully on mobile and I'll show you that in a minute. But right now, what you need to know is that for the favorites section, we're not using this on the front end at all. It's totally hidden. So if I go to this second tab here called table configuration, I'm gonna see the custom filters section. Clicking into this, you're gonna see all of the filters that I'm using at the top of the table. That's this section right here, there's eight of them. We're talking about Dave's favorites right now, so I'm gonna go to this one and let's open it up with the little pencil tool here. You can see I've given it the label, only Dave's favorites, and I'm looking for the value Dave's favorite, which is exactly what I'm typing in on the last column of my Google Sheet. We're filtering by the column favorite, so it's looking for just this column and then this value inside of it specifically. When that criteria is met, then only the items marked favorite will display. I'm using the same concept for the LTD filter. I've got this terms column right here and you can see that sometimes I use the word LTD. So there's actually a lot more information in here that I could pull out later if I find it useful. Maybe you're looking for only annually billed products. I can have a filter for that. In fact, there's other variations as well, like monthly or even weekly. But as I got into building the table, I figured most people are gonna expect most products to be annual. So it's gonna be better for me to just highlight when things are available as a lifetime deal. Just to give you a little bit of repetition here so you can see how this works, we'll go to terms here and I'm gonna click on the gear icon. Of course, this is hidden on all devices. We'll go to table configuration, custom filters, and then we'll find the terms filter right here. And if I edit it, it's gonna look exactly like what we just saw with the favorites. This label is only LTDs and we're looking for the value LTD. Of course, here we're filtering just the terms column. For things like the filter for the platform and functionality, we're using a multi-select dropdown. Inside the Google Sheet under platform, you can see that some items actually are available on multiple platforms. So I'm using a comma to separate them. The same thing goes for this use column here, which is actually the same thing as functionality. I've just labeled it differently in the Google Sheet. If I had multiple use cases or multiple functionalities, I could separate them with a comma and they would show up under filters for both. So in the table rows configuration over here, I'm gonna show you what I expect you already know, and that's gonna be that the platform as well as the functionality are going to be totally hidden on all devices. Their usefulness is only in the form of a filter, which we find under table configuration, filters, then functionality right here, I'm gonna edit, and you can see that it's placeholder here is functionality, that's the label that's displayed on the front end before you click anything. We've got a select dropdown UI filter, and we are using the use column to filter by. I've also checked down here, enable multi-select so that you can check more than one box at a time. The percent off filter here is almost exactly the same, except here I'm using manual data rather than dynamic data taken from the table. And I've entered in some values to filter between so we can look up items that are discounted 20%, 30%, so on. One feature that I really love is that when there's a promo code, 
you can click to copy it. I'm gonna show you how I did that because this took a little bit of trickery. It's not a built-in feature of Ninja Tables. I started out with a code field right here inside of the sheet, and then I tried to transform them inside of Ninja Tables. This is similar to what we did early on with the transform values. We could put some code and then use the little token or the placeholder here to wrap some code around that placeholder. However, for some reason, the code just wouldn't render properly for me inside of the table. I just didn't like to live inside of a Ninja table. So I started trying some plugins and lo and behold, this free one on the repository called copy anything to the clipboard works brilliantly. It has to enclose the text inside of these copy shortcodes. So copy to open and then another one here at the end to close off the part that is clickable. You might think we'll just put that inside of the transform value. However, that didn't work either. So what I ended up doing is simply building a nice little formula inside the Google sheet here so that anytime I entered something in the raw value here, it encloses it inside of a short code. If you remember from the very beginning of the video, the raw column is actually not being pulled into the spreadsheet at all. And instead I'm only pulling in this column right here called code with short code. This is another benefit of building inside of Google Sheets. We can use all the power and transformation ability of Google Sheets that just might not be available inside of whatever plugin you're using. In fact, I'm doing that in the expiration date column right here, where I've got a little filter set up. If I click on this, you can see that it's gonna hide everything that was after yesterday. So if it was before yesterday, it's gonna go away. Now, if I click OK, it's going to actually run this filter again. So I really like this because now I have some power over when expired items disappear. A lot of developers like to drag their heels on actually ending their sales. This way I can give it two or three days before it actually disappears from the deal page. So you can go and check it out. And if it's not running, well, at least you know the deal expired, but you might have a chance to grab it even though the developer said it was gonna be over. So it's automated but I still have some control over it. I like that. Let's talk about mobile responsiveness next because that's a very difficult problem to solve when it comes to tabular data. It tends to just be too wide to fit on a small screen. I think what Ninja Tables has done here is a really wise implementation of how to handle this. So for example, I've got a notes section here where I can leave some comments on deals if it needs clarifying or if I just wanna explain why I like a certain product, I've got an area to do that. However, that's not really necessary information. You can still browse the table without it. So what I'm doing right now is hiding that initially on mobile and tablet. So this is what the table looks like on mobile and I think it's actually completely usable and actually fairly beautiful to look at. I can click the little plus button here to disclose that hidden information so we can see the expiration date as well as my notes and I can still very easily click the buy button. When developers contact me about upcoming sales, they'll typically make it very clear that I'm not to make information about the sale public before the start of the sale. So it was important to me when building the table that I found a way to get the information into the table quickly so it didn't get lost in my inbox, but that it didn't become available publicly until it was time for the deal to start. I'm accomplishing this with this start date column right here, which prevents the deal from being published before the start date. And then I'm using the advanced short codes provided by Ninja Tables in order to filter out anything before that start date. I'll link to their documentation here because there's really a lot of different options for how you filter what is displayed, but I'll show you the exact short code that I'm doing and kind of explain how to think through it. So here is the deals page on the back end, and we'll go down to right here where the short code is being displayed. You can see that it's got Ninja Tables ID 651. That is the ID of the actual deals table. And then we've got the filter with this expression here, LT or less than, and then we've got the date. And the filter column is where we're pulling that date from, and the column name is called start date which you can find the column names right here. If I click on the gear icon, the start date is the column key. That's what we wanna use for those filters. The end result is that any deals that don't start before the current date are not displayed on the front end, which certainly gives me some peace of mind and might provide you some ideas for how you can filter out your table as well. So hopefully this video has inspired you to use Ninja Tables in ways you hadn't otherwise thought of. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you leave them down below. And hey, go check out my deals page if you've got any Black Friday shopping to do. I can help you find the deal that you want fastest. It does help me out a little bit, of course, because I try to use my affiliate links on that table as well. That's gonna do it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.